everyone, my name is Yeni Farasasmita and I'm here to tell you some stories or to give you a short summary of the stories. There are three stories. The first one is the ones who walk away from Omelas and then the necklace and the last one is the soul cages. Well, let's open this with the ones who walk away from Omelas by Ursula Cropper Le Queen. Welcome to Omelas, a perfect city. The festival of summer came to the city of Omelas, a lovely seaside city. The morning air was so clean that the snow was still crowning. The 18 peaks burned with a white cold fire across the miles of sunlit air under the blue sky. There's no government, no king, no war, and no army. I'm not sure of their society rules, but one thing I know for sure is that the people in the city live their lives to the fullest. Omelas are the perfect picture of life in a fairy tale, a utopian life. But you know what? All that happiness has a price. There is one thing hidden in the city. There is a child who is suffering a lot. The child is hidden in the basement of a building in Omelas. Hidden in the darkness, only a small amount of light penetrated through the cracks of the board it was confined to. Do the people of Omelas know about the child? Of course they do. Some came to see it once, and others simply knew. They knew the child had to be there, for their happiness, the beauty of their city, friendship, health, even the plenty of their harvest, and the nice weather of the sky, all depend on this child he knew being. Some people who saw the child suffering might wish to rescue and release it. However, if the child is free and given comfort, then all the prosperity, beauty, and pleasure of Omelas will disappear. And that's the rule. Is it worth giving kindness to one child in exchange for the happiness of thousands of people in Omelas? Well, some people can take this reality. One by one, they chose to leave and never came back. They go to a place even less imaginable than the city of happiness. I cannot describe it at all. It is possible that it doesn't exist, but they seem to know where they're going. The ones who walked away from Omelas. The second story is The Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. This is the story of Mathilda, a young middle-class woman from France who believes that she deserves better life. She dreams to have a luxurious lifestyle, to be beautiful, strong, and respected by everyone. But she regrets the fact that she will never be able to do so, since she married a poor cleric. One day, her husband says that they are invited to a party with a high social crowd. She gets upset because she has nothing to wear. Her husband had been saving money for a new gun, but he gives all of it to her for a new dress. As the event day drew near, she realizes she will need jewelry. She doesn't have any, so her husband suggested her to ask a rich friend to lend her jewelry. She wears it to the party, everyone loves her, and she has finally found happiness. After they return home, Mathilda realizes that she has lost a priceless necklace. Her husband decided to look for the necklace along the route that they have taken before, yet he returned without success. So they decided that they have to replace it instead. They borrow money from anyone in order to buy a replacement. They spent 36,000 francs for the necklace, a very big amount of money for the couple, leaving them a mountain of debt that will take them 10 years to pay. They eventually got poorer than before. Mathilda must scrub floors and her husband must work multiple jobs. During this period, she becomes exhausted and has aged considerably. Then one day, Mathilda sees her friend, but she doesn't recognize her. Mathilda explained that she has had to work off the tab from the necklace that she had borrowed. The friend then explained that the original necklace was a fake and only cost 500 francs. Move to the third, also the last story. This is The Soul Cages by Thomas Crofton Crocker. Well, The Soul Cages is an Irish folk story about a fisherman named Jack Dougherty who desires to meet Meryl, as his father and grandfather had done before him. He eventually met a male Meryl named Kumara on a rock in the midst of the sea. It has green hair and fangs, a crimson snout, scaly leg, a fish tail, and a stubby fin-like arms, and then they eventually became friends. 
Kumara lends him a hat that allows him to breathe underwater and will calm him to his undersea house. They eat and talk while Kumara shows him around. Then, Jack spots an odd collection of lobster traps. Kumara tells that they are the soul cages, in which he traps the spirit of drowned sailors. Kumara said that by keeping the soul safe with him, he is doing them a service. But Jack is appalled. He gets Kumara drunk and then leaves each one of the cages to let the soul go. From that time on, Jack used this tactic to free the soul called by Kumara, all unbeknown to his friend, the mirror. Kumara seems not to notice that the soul had gone missing, and their friendship continued for some years. However, in one morning, when Jack threw in a stone as a signal to Kumara, he received no response. He then assumed that Kumara had died or gone away from that area.